This podcast contains adult themes, sexual content, and strong language. If you can't handle that, you should probably leave. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. Again, 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 on another episode of Bustles and Bangers with Rachel and Christopher Danger, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, talking about mm-hmm. this book called Inside Outside. What's the book called? Inside Outside, Outside Inside, um, In Inside, sure and then this? Outside, and then Inside, and then Outside. Yes, we have read this. This looks Are you like crazy? smut. It doesn't look like something <clears throat> we would read. <laughs> yes, we only read classy <laughs> novels. <laughs> No, so anyway, for those of you who don't know us. Um, I dare you to recap this book. <laughs> okay, well, I will. Um, you know, we are your super sexy, awesome, fun, hilarious hosts of a crazy, smutty novel podcast where mm. we read this filth that's a little less filthy. I don't know. This one's pretty filthy. And then we make fun of it and we talk shit about it and we get really adult Everybody with it. in this book is a whore. <laughs> yeah, well, they're all <laughs> naked. So this is the second episode the second installment of a book called inside outside by philip jose farmer and it is basically what we know so far is they are encapsulated, enclosed in some sort of yeah, spherical hell spherical hell yeah like you can see how it's a desert people are all naked going to work and there are demons and racism <laughs> Racist demons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, right. what you know so far is that we have a couple of main characters, uh, Phyllis and Jack. I don't feel this, Jack. Mm, <laughs> Philip and Jack. So Jack is at this point seemingly hating Phyllis because there's some kind of past there between them. And he works at this place called The Exchange. And... I think Phyllis, I guess, has tied her boat to some of the higher ups, and that's why he's mad. He thinks she's like tied a whore. Tied her boat. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> yeah, she's a that's whore. That's slang for sucking the D. Yeah, yeah, putting a ring on it, but mm. only for sugar daddy reasons kind of thing. <laughs> Lip rings. Yeah, basically. Um, and so, anyway, Jack is like, I think that the exchange is kind of like a news gossip detective sort of situation bar. no it's no it's a call center without the drinks it's a call center it's a call remember center. That sucks, dude. so yeah, he's yeah. gotten somebody called in and he feels like he's gotten a hot tip mm-hmm. a hot, hot lead a hot tip <laughs> so i figure he, hot tips are normal as yeah <laughs> yeah um so he un unbeknownst to him he was going to have to travel alongside phyllis for whatever reason she's got to go the same direction same town same whatever and if you can remember the very last thing that we really read was that he was traveling by piggyback service oh yeah do you remember and that? so he, had he to was get carded. yeah but people it would be random different guys carrying him because like in hell things are weird there's phones and apartment buildings and you can't die you can die but you're going to come back there's even an ambulance so do you get paid for being a piggyback escort i guess you get maybe an allowance like because they are buying tobacco products some kind of weird food and coffee even though they said there's like no food growing here but oh, yeah, they somehow have the, they get coffee the rock trees right yeah rock trees mana clouds okay. crap like that it's coming back to me yes so the last thing that we left off on was that um jack I think was way ahead of Phyllis on the piggyback service. That's faster. <laughs> Cause she was being carted in a box or something. Dang. And, um, but apparently that's a better way to travel. Cause you don't have to hold on and your legs don't get raw and people aren't oh, dropping so she's like you. Lounging kind in of. Box kind, and yeah. carrying the box. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, but it's slower. So he has finally reached his destination. Um, he's supposed to meet this guy named Fyodor and Sven, these guys, at a cafe to discuss, not over the phone, some thing. Okay, so. Can you imagine piggybacking to like a drug deal? <laughs> we have to go do some thing and I need an Uber. Like Uber's not in obvious. hell. You have to get 
the pig you gotta express, ride yeah, this dude. dude you gotta I mean, ride the pony you're like i'm a 300 and Rider. pound six five dude. fella and like the dude that shows up looks like me fucking five nothing <laughs> You gotta get on him. Oh yeah. my god, uh, he's gotta get on you. I'm here to, I'm here to carry you to that your. Sucks. <laughs> but that's part of hell, you know. And they're like, it's miserable. I mean, I could just walk, and then you're like, but it's my job, and they're like, okay, it's faster. They put their, feet, they put their legs over on your shoulders, right? Yeah. You carry them, and their feet touch the fucking ground anyway. Dude, but these guys are like, running. You're, you're, I know, I get it, but you're running, but the dude's just dragging his feet on the back. Like, Kind, was, yeah. If, if it was huge. If it was size, Maybe you know, there's different size guys for different size travelers. Maybe. I don't know. And do you have to like put that in? They called them their ponies too. They oh. said like something about I don't know. They have like a he bit got in their mouth he and got everything. piggyback sick or bounce sick. He called bounce it bounce sick. sick instead of like seasick. Yeah, <clears throat> I've gotten bounce sick before. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different kind of throwing up. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So he arrives right um, okay so he's coming yeah he he's came. arriving he came all right i'm arriving <laughs> so let's see uh i guess he's talking to sven sven's broad red face thick orange mustache was ho- hovering over him i guess he got dropped off one of the guys because they kept chunking him because he was falling asleep and he said oh, yeah he was not allowed to sleep on the on well the no he's allowed there. to sleep but because you're sleeping if you don't hop off the guys are just going to drop your ass on the ground they don't care I mean, they're. It's not like a baton where they gotta hand you off <laughs> like softly. They just no, drop they don't your ass shit. There. They're like, get off, so go to the next like, guy. Yeah, but you have to go to the next guy. That's a well. You long. they probably are dropping you a, at the next guy. I have a critique on this business. Oh my god. Well, when we get to hell, baby, <laughs> we I'm can, gonna talk to him about it. Hey, right, we'll, listen. <laughs> I'm tired of getting thrown down, man. <laughs> We'll make this a little better. You don't even know if this is the real hell yet, so just hang tight. It's their hell. Whoever's it's, carrying yeah, that it's mo- miserable. that dude. Yeah, piggyback yeah. service. That guy, it's that guy's hell for sure. Yeah, it's super weird. So, uh, rough, ain't it? He said, grinning. <laughs> Think it's worth it? It better be, Cole said as he rose painfully. Got any coffee? Fyodor's waiting at the cafe, Sven said. Come along. Mm-hmm. So, an, if you remember in the first episode, earthquakes happen. They okay. think it's because the that hell is expanding every time some souls. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes, what yes, they yes, think. Yes, okay, so yes. well, another earthquake strikes. Mm. Cole throws him. Oh, and sorry, it's Jack Cole. So they oh, that's call, right, Jackal. Yeah, they call mm. him by his last name a lot in this. So Cole. Yeah. Cole. Yeah. Cole. K A L. C U L L. Cole. C U L L. Yeah. In that. Never mind. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just go ahead. He threw himself on the stone, digging in with his fingers. The shaking and growling did not last more than 30 seconds. He rose and looked around. Not too much damage. Here and there in the faces of the buildings, uh, and a block of granite had shoved forward and hung out over the street. A woman had mm-hmm. leaped out of a window Finally. in her panic and was a mess on the street. Dang, she's splattered all over the mm, place, huh? Dang. Yeah. At this point, why would you panic for any reason? Just but if you're going to die, back, die. Right? Well, well, the ambulance will have to come get her. Man, you know what? That's just an adventure at that point. He's like, hey, you guys want to go get <laughs> fucking killed today? Let's yeah. go. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know why. See y'all tomorrow. He said, if anything, it's just a, a momentary rest. That's you what know? I'm saying. Like, maybe yeah. they get the rest of the day off. Yeah, I'd be suiciding every day. Every day. <laughs> so. <laughs> every day, like, hey, how are you going to do it today? <laughs> yeah, like, let me just try it different. I just, but it's just painful. Wake up and have your bullet bed just God. <laughs> but what if you don't die on some of them no. that sucks because remember okay. that movie we watched where he said uh you know a fast death what is way that? better than uh palm springs oh yeah that movie is great yeah so we'd highly recommend watching palm springs not that we're paid to say that but no we we're did definitely love not, it. But it was fun yeah it was awesome so Sven said softly, paid to, we ain't paid to say nothing. <laughs> Please somebody pay us to say stuff. I'll say anything you want. Man, they trapped us in here weeks ago and they won't let us out. They keep the power button on with the power. They gave us, look, miniature water. And they keep shoving these shitty books under the door and making I us just, read them. Yeah, I need some food though. Yeah, we're right. hungry. <laughs> so here we go. Listen, Sven said, have you noticed that the quakes have been getting more frequent lately? Perhaps oh, what that demon yeah. told me is true. Cole's like, what demon? The he demons are on the locker room. Like, guess what? I just told this fucking idiot <laughs> yeah. out there. Told him the earthquakes were expanding. Yeah. Like, that's classic. He'll go and check one out and die. Yep. He <laughs> said, you know what liars they are, but sometimes they do tell the truth, if only to make you think it's a lie. Oh, I Anyway, like he says that Earth is in the throes of an atomic war, that the immigration from there is so heavy mm-hmm. that almost all of the population must be dying, or maybe all. There's no way of determining at what time events take place on Earth because the terrestrial and infernal Infernal chronolo- 
chronological. Yep. <laughs> chronologies. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Chronologies. This is stupid. There, it's not happening in chronological order. Okay. <laughs> Uh, They're not geared together. Um, So Cole said, if what he's been told is true, there's a lag. He met an old fellow once that said he knows for a fact that those who died in the last half of the 16th century immigrated here before those who died in the first half. So basically, nobody really knows what's going on. And that's the whole point, I think, of Jack trying to find They created another hill in the the 16th century. Yeah. So what you also have to understand is I think a lot of this is circled around a character named X. Jack is trying to find out what X's deal is. Okay. So they're trying to figure all that out. X, what is your deal? Yeah. What's the deal, X? Who wants to run and talk to their X? So Mm, things here are just as obscure, puzzling, and unanswerable as they were on Earth. I think that's part of our punishment. Keep us guessing. Uh, Cole is saying it. Is it better not to have been born and thus never have existed? Sometimes, many times, I think so. But even with all the miseries, frustrations, humiliations, anxieties, and pains that we had on earth and have here, we still get a chuckle, a good belly laugh, and a piece of ass. Well, those three things I like. Yeah. All right. But the chuckle and the belly laugh is kind of the same thing. I guess a chuckle's more I like... I don't know <laughs> if I belly laugh unless I'm tripping, <laughs> but like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I do, I do snirk and like S- what, snirk, 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 snirk. I do like, I do we that snicker. a lot. Yeah, I snicker. snicker all the time. People you do like, that. Because it's, it's usually it's a iron. nasal. Yeah. Like, oh, something funny. No, irony probably yeah. just slaps somebody in the fucking head. And I, that's I saw what, it. That's what I think he means. A belly laugh is actually you did have a good time. And then the piece of ass, of course, is the yeah. cherry on top. I scoff a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> see, you're not denied pride or sex in hell. I mean, everybody's naked anyway. Why not just be on top of each other? You know, mm-hmm. you know, but they still mm-hmm. have to go to work and answer telephones and sit at mm-hmm. desks. It's What's, crazy. What if it's all like the fives and below in hell? Oh, yeah. Ma- Ooh. That would suck. He says that these people are attractive, though, mm-hmm. that there's some attractive ones. If you're a five and you see another five, I of course so. they're attractive. I guess so. Well, I mean, like, look at them on the cover. They look like they'd be attractive based on the the, Arth- uh, the Arthurs. The Arthurs. The Terminators, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a Barbie. So I started getting some Diablo vibes. I know you and I have been talking about the game. Um, So in this moment, I was kind of getting those vibes. So they had to slow down for a moment while they're walking to the cafe because a mana cloud, and that's where I got the vibes from. A cloud made out of a man or a man made out of a cloud? M-A-N-N-A, mana, mana, however you want to say it. A tomorrow cloud? Yeah. Well, so in the game, you know, your potions is mana. Like it gives you like life. Like Mm -hmm. you pick up a mana potion. Well, so this is called a mana cloud and it gives you substance. Oh, so you eat it. It's like cotton candy. Sort of. So it says that it had been formed forming over some time over the area and the filaments had begun precipitating oh. whipping this way and that ran back and forth but people were running around and a mob had gathered around and were tearing away chunks of it so somehow it sounds this like cotton candy basically but i guess it's like the only sustenance that you could get um all right that sucks <laughs> anyway i guess it can get pretty wild too people will freak out and you know fight pretty wild Hell yeah because yeah. some would get more than enough others would go hungry until the next cloud dropped its nutritious load <laughs> or they could barter something precious for the mana. Like, really? It's just an even bigger demon dipping mm, his dick mm. down in the aquarium and throwing his load. Right, here you go. Eat up, yeah. fuckers. Like, is that female cow's milk or is it male cow's milk? <laughs> male cow's milk tastes uh-huh. funny. <laughs> so Cole thought, what a hell of a way to provide food for a world. Okay. So they finally came to the sidewalk cafe in the city. Remember, we were talking about the grammar in here. This is another proper noun. It's called the city. The city. The well, if city. I named a city, that's probably what the it would city. be called. Back. What is it called? It's called the city. <laughs> yeah. What's your dog's name? Dog. What's the, your cat's name? Cat. The dog. The cat. <laughs> the demon waiter was serving the customers Rock Tree Coffee. Rock Tree Coffee. There seven, it is again. Seven. See, they've been calling him Sven, but all of a sudden it says seven. And I'm like, did this guy fuck up one thing? grammatically and he called him seven instead of spin or is it supposed to be seven the whole time and not spin i'm confused Mm. seven stopped by one of the round tables uh, around which five men sat one rose to greet them and cole knew what is this waiter about to have to do Mm. to these five people Mm. this is not a porn Uh, 
thought this, this, this was a, a raunchy novel. It's a classic fancy novel. Here we, everybody buckle up. It's fucking time. <laughs> it's fucking time. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's on. fucking fucking time. Yeah. So uh, Cole knew by his voice that he was Fyodor. And this is who he's, you know, supposed to be meeting up with. So, oh, shit. Fyodor was a... Grease up them lips, Cole. It's time. (laughs) Well, if you want to know what he looks like, Fyodor was a thick-bodied short man. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) You're not even thick. Shut up. No, I'm scrawny You're lean. You're nice. I'm tiny. No, you're not little. Blow away. No, I just... (laughs) Shut up. It's not even like that. If anybody wants to see how sexy he is, Go to our social media pages, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. All right. So, Don't ask for my porn name. Well, yeah, you can definitely DM us and ask for his porn name. That's coming up. As soon as I can submit the survey, not survey, but the paperwork. All right, so he had a big, bald, round head. Hell yeah. And an uncut, untrimmed, nice. gray shot beard. Oh, I thought they were going somewhere else with that. <laughs> I don't know why you had to say uncut and untrimmed. Like, that's the same thing. That well, hung maybe down to his he waist. was really hairy, but he was circumcised. <laughs> his, Un- uncut, untrimmed. It also says his forehead was tall, his eyebrows bushy. He had little blue eyes above a... a bu- <laughs> Sounds ugly as fuck. Dude. <laughs> Above a blob of a nose. A blob of a nose. Somebody just threw it on there. Huh? High and prominent cheekbones and thick red lips. He what sounds the fuck? ugly. Hey, what was the demon on um, the Hercules movie, the animated movie? That little, you know, the little squatty demon. There were the two demons. Oh yeah. Like I, what, I don't uh, remember what their names were. God, what the fuck? I All haven't right. seen that movie since I was a kid. And I should know because I, I mean I they were named them. after other little. It was like pain and suffering or something like that. It was like moan and wail. It was something Something stupid like that. Yeah. Anyway, deep blue shadows and pouches under his eyes made him look as if he seldom slept and that uneasily. That doesn't make any sense. Um, So they say they'd rather talk in private. Um, They at that time, they hear a siren wailing. They knew that the ambulance was coming for the woman on the streets. And because this is part of the reason they're here to talk of course that catches their attention because they need to see what happens who's there who shows up okay so cole jack says to sven get exchange on the phone if x shows we can notify the exchange why should sven do that said fyodor none of your business cole replied but i'll tell you anyway (laughs) Ah. Well, you're just an open book. <laughs> He's an idiot. He says, whenever X appears, we drop all other business and hold the lines open. We are trying to determine if X is more than one person. If he, also capitalized, should appear simultaneously in two or more places in the city, we will know it's because of our phone reports. That also didn't make sense to me because like, why? Your phone reports aren't the thing making him show up in two cities. That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, so well, far he's clearly on drugs writing this book. Oh, gotta be. So gotta be. No what did you take, way. and where can we get it? Uh, bath salts. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so so far he's shown up in uh, one place at a time, but quite often he'll pick up a corpse in one section of the city, and then a short time later he'll be in another section as far as a hundred miles away. That's a big city. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess there's several cities. I don't know. Well, that's a different city. Well, that's this. It's then the city be like number two. Two cities 100 miles away? That's yeah. incredible. We're back the same city 100 miles away. Yeah. Whoa. Golly. It's a big city. Well, so the sirens wailed louder and the ambulance sped around the corner with a ripshaw cry. The wheels locked and the vehicle skidded to a stop just short of the dead woman. You know, hold on. Pause, mm. everybody. If I was an ambulance driver in hell and I knew that these people are just going to keep dying over and over and it's not really doing anything. Girl, I'm not slamming my brakes on, skidding, Maybe they're just having fun. I'm smoking, chilling, and we'll get to you. (laughs) (laughs) I'll see you in the next life. Yeah, dude. I... (laughs) Uh, if you kill I ain't your, rushing for if nobody. If you die, it's a fucking four day wait, my guy. Dumbass jumped out of a building. Why are we rushing Stupid for her? Ass. She doesn't even want to come see back. See you next week. But see, maybe that's part of the punishment. You can't be dead for too long because it's restful, you know? Like, you know what? That's not my fucking problem. 
I'm not getting paid hey, the big bucks. Yeah, boss, you want to fix the rules? Fix the rules until then. You're a problem for any See? boss anywhere, any reality. Don't let reality. me work for you. Please don't. <laughs> Everybody that does gets frustrated. <laughs> well, I like your ideals. I wish I'm I could great live by with my, more. With, I'm great with my peoples, but like yeah. my boss and my superiors. They don't like they you. They don't really like me. I love you, though. And you're not my superior. Uh-huh. Not in the workplace, anyway. Mm. I Maybe like when in you're, the workplace. I like when you're my superior in bed. Oh. Mm. So anyway, speaking of bed. I and make you fill out TPS reports <laughs> and fucking file this shit alphabetically. Uh, oh, well, all our, porno, all our <laughs> pornographic photos, I'll, yeah. I'll organize them alphabetically, alphabetically by what's happening. Fellatio. <laughs> what's the first color you notice? <laughs> file it. Nude. <laughs> all right, so. The N file's real fool. <laughs> naked. Nude, naked. <laughs> nasty nasty so here's something nasty not gonna show my kids yeah definitely yeah what do we do with that before we die man yeah we burn it hello friends we need you to (laughs) burn this box for us our lawyer's gonna get it and they're gonna be like they're gonna keep it (laughs) they're gonna keep it bank bank material right there sell it and just yeah like donate the money to to um animals who need to be adopted yeah you sell it that's right <laughs> sell all of our porn uh, so here's the deal listen listen to this nastiness all right i'm ready the pervert oh. who had been on her oh jumped up and ran away with both of his bloodied hands held high above his head dang what does that mean oh, he, he was his hands are well bleeding? he's just ah! no he was a pervert was on her dead body mm. Fucking with her. Ew, and he ran away. And when the when they came to the stop, he's like, oh! Ew. Yeah. Well, I mean. Mm. All yeah, right, but here's gross. here's what I'll tell you about pervs. Well, yeah, it's hell. Oh, yeah, whatever. All right. And they're all fucking threes and fours. <laughs> Cole knew the fellow would not get too far. Mm. He had undoubtedly been noted by one of the exchange's agents and would soon find himself in its hands. The exchange. The call center. Mm-hmm, yeah, I don't know what all they do. Super. We're learning what they do, so listen. <laughs> the exchange did not tolerate perverts of any kind, harmless or otherwise. Good. But Good they were them. not killed, for then they might be out of reach. Oh, they trapped them? So the exchange castrated them Oof. cut out their tongues Oof. amputated all four limbs mm, dang. and thus made them unable to offend or harm anybody even themselves nor were they rolled out upon the streets to shift for themselves the exchange took care of their simple wants at its own expense kept them alive and clean even gave them coffee now and then or a cigarette the average citizen would be surprised at the vast numbers of sexless tongueless handless and footless men and women hidden from the public view in the city if he knew he would have even Mm. more if he knew he would have even more respect for the ability of the exchange to keep law order and decency so the exchange is a giant call center that just runs shit i guess because but they're not even who runs so you call them they're like hi how can we run shit (laughs) but they don't even run shit because they're they they also have this entity called the authorities you know so i don't know why the the exchange has anything I, i feel like they're a detective agency or something i don't know so anyway the doors of the ambulance swing open and x is there oh x is there in the flesh right? huh? yeah um so they're talking about how he's dressed and that he's the only one allowed to dress like that um he's got reddish hair reddish beard He's muscular, well shaped. His legs were bare. He wore sandals. Bare legs. The right. face was the face most people think Christ should have. But a jarring note: he wore dark glasses. Nobody, as far as the exchange could determine, had ever seen him without the eye concealing devices, and this was driving its agents crazy. Why should X wear dark glasses? Mm-hmm. Another mystery was why he or he, so one's capitalized, one's not. Because yeah. see, I think that they think he could be Jesus. It, and, okay, yeah. Because, you know, they said, I think at one point, you know, that Jesus had to visit hell for a minute or whatever. And, right, and maybe he never left or he maybe he wasn't left. allowed maybe to leave. Maybe he didn't leave. Yeah, we don't know. So they wonder why he even bothers to appear. He never resurrected in public or performed any miracles. He merely supervised the placing of the body in the ambulance. Occasionally he made a short speech. It was always the same. And this was one of those times for after the body had been placed inside the vehicle, he began talking. Yeah. 
He's just preaching. So but they think X might be the Lord. It's a speculation. Every Everything is a speculation. Nobody knows what's really going on about anything ever at all. <laughs> so I'm not, okay. not going to bore you with the entire story. It takes up like three pages, but I'll give you a short rundown. Basically, right. it's about this man who was approached by some sort of angel or deity or something like that. And they were like, listen, you can get into heaven, mm-hmm. but you have to do this one thing. It's one thing. And it was to go kill this little girl. Oh, well. He was given a sword and it's like, you need to go kill her because she, when she is allowed to live, will be the worst thing that's ever happened ever. Countless horrors. But the guy can't do it. You know, he's like, I can't do that. She's just a little girl. And they're like, well, if you don't do it, you don't get. You're not going to heaven. And you're allowing all evil to reign so it's like this whole good and evil story and moral compass and blah 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 yeah who yeah where show me true north on a moral compass Uh. same uh (laughs) mike do you have a moral compass handy can you show me true north please where do you keep that oh Okay. It's in my back pocket. Your morality is speculative. Let me and, pull it out my ass. And relative. In yeah. any way you want to slice and dice it, my guy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyways, the monster is going to be unleashed. Well, but. I say that twice a week. But dude. here's the deal. Yeah. Just like <laughs> everything else seems to be leaving people hanging in hell and speculating and not knowing. Here's where the story ends. He says, so. You wait, the book's over? No, shut up. Not the, his oh, story. Okay. X's story. Oh, X's his story. His little preachy story. He says. So the old man walked softly up to the little girl whose back was to him. He raised the sword. Then another thought came to him. And it says here, X always ended his speech. So you don't get to know. Did the man kill her? Did he not? We don't know. What did he choose? What was the other thought? We don't know. I am riveted by that X. I really appreciate your weird, dark, ominous figure coming here and just telling a shitty story. Appreciate it. Speaking of, you know, that, Fyodor was feeling that way i know you're saying it sarcastically but fyodor who had been standing at cole's side began sobbing loudly tears ran down his cheeks and soaked his beard he he says like um if he could feel if he could correctly finish the story he'd be free and out of this place and cole says to him it's just another trick to keep us guessing hoping looking at x and hating him uh fyodor says what do you mean he said he's another of the false prophets Oh, yes, of course. All right. So he Didn't says, you know? Yeah. So uh, he's saying some stuff and Fyodor continued to ask what Cole meant, but he could not explain to Fyodor that the exchange developed rumors into new religions and profited by the power it wielded over the converts and their contributions to the exchange. Mm. So now you know what the exchange is. They are falsely creating religions and followings and and hoping that the people of hell i have so many things convert. to say that would probably piss everybody off that's <laughs> listening to this we may need to save it for a different Man. podcast yeah y'all are mad make me start <laughs> preaching dude all right well i'm sorry i knew it was gonna be <laughs> no, getting no, no, into that, was, it. that was great okay no, no. well so you caught you yeah okay so fyodor starts freaking sounds like out. another empire i know Fyodor starts freaking out, like, as in, you know, anybody who has a faith, if you deny, if you say that that's probably wrong, they're going to freak out, right? Yeah, you He's can't like, do that. He's like, faith, faith is the only way. Love for him, cried Fyodor, and he rushed forward until he reached X, knelt down and grabbed the hem of X's robe and began kissing it. Master, he shouted, tell me I am here only to be purged of my sins and my doubts. You know that I have always loved you. I would love you even if you were wrong, if you were condemned to eternal exile here or chose to stay forever because of your love for man then i would gladly forgo heaven and stay by your side throughout eternity x looks him dead in his eyes and goes stand up punch yourself well here's what harder x- <laughs> harder <laughs> fold yourself 12 <laughs> times stupid <laughs> so here's what x does do x looks kindly at fyodor and touched him lightly on the head but he passed him without a word cole could not explain why fyodor had enraged him but he picked up a fist-sized piece of basalt chipped off basalt i I don't know how i'm saying it right no i'm sure it was basalt (laughs) it's basalt basalt (laughs) chipped off a fallen gargoyle and threw it the stone hit fyodor in the back of the head and he fell forward on his face blood trickled from the cut at the sight of blood the crowd gave a roar so x 
Alex did that to him? No, no, no. F- um, Cole Jack was oh, pissed Cole, and he because okay. he thought Fyodor was a fucking idiot, and so he's like, "Tonk!" And it, Fyodor starts bleeding, and the the crowd. Remember, we said if the crowd sees blood, they freak out. Oh, yeah. I don't know oh, why. I, ah! I, I don't know why, but they right. freak out. So at the sight of blood, the crowd gave a roar, sullen but silent. In the presence of X, it now came to life and loudness. It surged forward, seized the two aides and X, and also began rocking the ambulance. Within three minutes, the ambulance was lying on its side. Three minutes? It took a crowd three minutes to knock over an ambulance? <laughs> Dude, are you kidding? In hell? Uh, Man, we could do that on a Saturday in like 45 seconds. seconds. Dude, are you <laughs> shooting me? So there was nothing left of the two aides and X, but scattered pieces of flesh and clothing and three mutilated heads. They tore them apart. Tore so them X apart. Is dead, huh? Well, like an animal. <laughs> yeah. Abruptly, the mob fell silent. Men and women stared at each other, their hands dripping blood, uh, dropping fragments sorry, of flesh. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. It happened again. <laughs> oh, oops. Oops. <laughs> um, some blood. Some had blood on their mouths. Suddenly, panic Hell swept yeah, that, them. That's one of my people. <laughs> away down the street as if they were dried leaves blown by the wind. Fyodor and Cole were the only ones left. Damn. By then, Fyodor was sitting up, feeling the back of his head and groaning. You really started something, Cole said. You shouldn't have hailed him as the true Christ. That made everybody mad, you know. Nobody likes blasphemy. Accusing him was not unjust, for he really had instigated the whole affair. He had not done... If he had not done what he did, he would not have enraged Cole. So Cole's like telling him it's his fault, but really he also didn't have to smack him with the rock. So yeah, I don't know who really rock? started it. Who throws it? rocks? <laughs> people who stone people. Stone oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the stoning stories. <laughs> so that means something different nowadays. Yeah. So uh, stay here, Cole said to Fyodor. He went to the building where the exchange had its lo- exchange had its local phone. Nobody was in the office. The lynching must have scared the exchange agents too. Mm-hmm. What did they think that they were running away from? Lightning? Blah 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 blah. blah. Why is anybody afraid of anything? Aren't they just gonna come scoop them back up, bring them back to life? Maybe they don't want to be They're armless, like, no, limbless, tongueless, and he didn't do anything for crotchless. Worse. They're just like look. We don't want to die because Chris is the ambulance driver and <laughs> he fucks shit up. Man, he's slow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he is. So Jack is just trying to call up people. He's also. Oh, no. He, OK, so here's this guy named Stingarius. That's Phyllis's dude. Stingarius. Stingarius. All right. Um, and he's asking Jack, where the hell's Phyllis? Is she all right? And he's like, I don't know. She's not traveling as fast as me. And he's like, uh, he gets smart with him. And he's like, don't get smart with me. And he's like, I didn't mean to give you that impression. I was just commenting. That's all. Don't let it happen again. Yeah, you stay stupid in front yeah. of me, you moron. So um, he's asking questions about where he was, blah, blah, blah. He explains what happened. Dur, 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 I don't care. So yeah, cool. Stingarius, hearing his report, also became excited. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you excited every time I do a report. <laughs> I just had reports of two other ambulance personnel behaving extraordinarily. Mm-hmm. Moreover, there are many corpses that haven't been taken away for some time. What is going on? That's my slow ass not doing my job. <laughs> Smoking fast enough. the weed. Everybody's <laughs> mad at me. So yeah. So anyway, things are changing. It's getting weird. All of a sudden, shit's weird, right? Yeah. Things have been pretty normal. Now shit's weird. Now shit's weird. Shit's weird now (laughs) also according to the statistics department the influx of newcomers has dropped Mm -hmm. to almost zero this happened a few hours ago (laughs) it's It's like Everything just stops. So like, I oh. think we need to talk to the statistic department and see what's going on. <laughs> it looks like we've n- dropped to zero. <laughs> That's like when the dollar goes to zero. Oh everybody's like, oh. All right. So it's as if the door to earth has been slammed shut. Cole like was chilled. Nikki. <laughs> yeah. You mean that all of humanity is dead? dead. So that means like maybe, the, maybe that's it. The apocalypse happened. It's done. Or, or cool. is it something else? It might be something else. So listen, you better stop talking crazy you're trying to undermine the exchange blah 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 cole's like i was just speculating and he's like listen just you just keep in touch and don't forget about phyllis all right all right um (laughs) and so here's more ex here's more speculation they're like maybe there were no authorities there had to be no human agency was capable of resurrecting the dead or getting to the scene of death so quickly or could it be that the authorities had given certain human beings certain powers or scientific devices which enabled them to perform resurrection and then the authorities had gone back to wherever they'd come from there was one way to find out he was a fool for not having thought of it before 
Fyodor, alarmed at Cole's sudden departure, called, Where are you going? Cole says, To get X's head. It was still in the middle of the street where Fyodor had tenderly placed it. Tenderly. Tenderly. So, <laughs> all right. the dark glasses were still stuck on the head. Nobody has taken them off. <laughs> Now he thought, I'll remove the glasses, see the eyes of X, if I have to lift the eyelids myself. So he's trying to figure out if he's a demon or not. Um, and he he's trying, if they shone in the dark when the light was turned on him, I guess they're a demon. Angels who had the same type of eyes, blah, blah, blah. If Cole took X's head into a dark room and shone the light into the eyes and the eyes reflected light, he would still not know if X was celestial or infernal, but he would know that he had not been human. So he's going to take his head, try to figure this shit out. All right. We're going to eliminate one of the three. All right. Yeah. And he starts talking about angels and the sons of God found the daughters. Okay. So he's speculating humanity and angels he's talking about how angels can have sex Mm -hmm. and that a fallen angel and a human had had sex so even the angels had sex and spermatozoa spermatozoa and and spermatozoa (laughs) and genes and all that goes with the biological paraphernalia who had ever heard of a female angel yet they must exist for what use was a male without female so he's just he's in his head okay, just talking, all right. talking 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 okay. yeah <laughs> so one of the ambulance I attendants i guess was there still and he starts running off and cole's like shouting at him He's like, stop, I'll have you skinned alive for this, you bastard, if you don't stop. I don't know. What did he do? The, uh, he just wanted to holler at somebody? One of the ambulance attendants, attendants quit leaning against the hood. He stared at Cole, then divining Cole's inattention. Oh, he grabbed the head and ran. Mm. Cole was trying to get to it. He grabbed the head and ran. He's like, if you don't stop, you know, you bastard, blah, blah, blah. So he chases him down. He tries to chase him down, and this guy ends up going down into a manhole. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if Gross. <laughs> is a down or up? Uh, I came in a manhole. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, he did what? <laughs> it's a sewer. Okay, so he goes down the sewer <laughs> entrance. Um, so if you can remember too, when the doctor was in Jack's place, you know, and mm. he picked up the phone, he heard somebody saying it's down in the sewers. It's down in the sewers. So I think it all clicks for Jack, and he's going to follow him down. Right, the sewers. it's down in the sewers. So. A crowd had started gathering again, and I guess they were also chasing after them. So Mm -hmm. he had to make a quick decision. Well, Phyllis happened to be being chased by some of these people. Mm -hmm. Like they were going to rip her apart for Mm -hmm. whatever reason. Phyllis, don't worry. I'm going to rip you apart. (laughs) (laughs) So. um, Oh, wait. She's like a five at max, right? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, Phyllis. It's against the rules. We don't know. It was then that My moral compass didn't point that way. Yeah. So she ran her breath rasping so loudly he could hear it. Um. He lifted her in his arms and carried her into the manhole. After lowering her to Fyodor, he jumped down the hole, almost missing the ladder. So they're in the sewers of hell. Awesome. Because hell, hell needs, needs the sewer, sewers. Of course. If they need phones, they need sewers. So let's see. Fyodor seems to know his way around here. Fyodor does seem to know his way He around. does. He, he thinks he knows where some things are he's left some things in there okay so they're gonna get some supplies they're gonna try to follow this demon ambulance attendant that stole the head phyllis is all crying and shit you know so she's all like was it really you who saved me what are we going to do now he's like sure i did i did and we're gonna do it (laughs) i did and it (laughs) (laughs) though i don't know why i should have watched you being torn apart it would have only been justice to let them do it but i didn't she goes you still love me she said wonderingly don't you believe it he replied harshly i love your body what Mm -hmm. man wouldn't but i hate you what would you expect after you're telling me how much you hated me how frigid you are how you acted so passionately only to advance yourself to another man who could do you more good you bitch oh low blow Mm, 
Fyodor. I don't like. I don't like him calling her. Yeah, Fyodor is like, y'all come on, take my hand, follow me. I found the place where I've stored my supplies. Mm-hmm. Phyllis rose and took Jack's hand. He groped around until his hand met Fyodor's. <laughs> What'd you find first? around his weenus before you touched him. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> there was some little room. They get in and they get some supplies. Right. Yeah. All right. I so. love going into rooms for supplies. <laughs> That's usually like cheese it some fucking. Well, remember the one writers. book where she was always going into the closet. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go to the I closet. I have to go. They're selling. <laughs> that was a donut a day. Donut sugar across the counter over here. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah. They did. There, there was donut sugar all over their mouth. They just like. Mm-hmm. I've never seen somebody put that much donut sugar in their nose. Licking the donut hole. <laughs> so, anyway, Fyodor starts expressing that the way he got these supplies were terrible, terrible ways. Oh, terrible did he things. say it like that? Because if he did, he's lying. He said, to obtain these materials, I had to consider that the end, consider that the end justifies the means, but have I made the end evil by using evil means? That's I do saying. not know and cannot bear contemplating that such a possibility exists. Mm. Agreed. Thus, you see, morality threads throughout the fabric of both the physical and spiritual universes. Mm. Chemistry involves ethics. There is no separation of the two or indeed of anything. What do you think? I think you're full of shit. I think, why are y'all still talking so <laughs> Ethics and chemistry? Whatever, if dude. If you're in hell, why do you even care to contemplate Speaking anything at this point? Speaking of ethics and chemistry, did you know that the Unabomber died like I heard. two weeks you, ago? Yeah, you told me. Yeah. Well, Crazy, right? Yeah. Well, everybody's got to at some point. Everybody's it's not that crazy. Point. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. It's like the most normal thing. Well, I just mean like, you no, know, I know. N- not every day that a, a celebrity terrorist gets killed. <laughs> or not killed, but dies. Yeah, I, I guess. guess not every day. Hopefully there's not so many that it could be every day. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, They're dying every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> I guess we don't really know. So slews of fucking just dropping, dropping yeah. like flies. That's good though. Well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, at one point they say as. They're, you know, they're all going back and forth. There's a lot of like speculating, contemplating, morality talk, blah blah blah. You know this already. Yeah, yeah. So they're like. Um, they're talking about it. He's like, you could say the same thing about killing on earth. If a man has an afterlife, why is it a sin to kill him? He will rise again. No, even here, murder is interference with a man's business and destiny. It is blocking a man's free will. As long as a man's business is not harmful to others, he should be allowed to do what he will. That's why this place is full of lawyers and government officials. Is that why? Because they're always yeah. in the fucking way. Yeah, maybe. There's briefcases <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why I'm here as a good person. You're in the fucking way, my guy. I don't know. So, trying to progress. Yeah. So it was then that he began to wonder if Fyodor might not be a demon. He dropped back about 40 feet and then called, Fyodor, what? Nothing. I just thought <laughs> I saw I something. I'm just going to hold back 40 feet. Hey, bud, what? <laughs> it's just, that's all he does. And he's like, <laughs> stupid. I guess he was shining a light on Fyodor, but Fyodor's eyes had not shown. So, uh, so he's, he's trying human. to be sneaky. He's human, yeah. Phyllis moaned and said in a low voice to Christopher, Cole. Christopher, that was amazing. <laughs> Please, <laughs> do we have to go on? I'm so scared. I know. It's okay. Just keep mm. going, Phyllis. Hey, don't that's worry. what you say when you go in the back door. It's not so fucking, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> it's just okay. Keep, just it's okay. Let it. I just know. You're relax, so sweet. Relax. Mm. Hold on. Let me take me back. I'm that's the only thing that ever makes me want it is that you're so sweet about it deep breath (laughs) 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 tears will be shed they they might be consensual but they are shedding now for the rest of it (laughs) god damn that was just the beginning so he says would you rather go back and be torn to pieces I'd rather take that chance. At least I'd know what I was facing. But down here, there might be worse things than being ripped to shreds. Besides, the exchange may have things in hand again. I doubt it. There's something very bad, very powerful going on. I want to find out who or what is running this inferno. You fool, she said. I'll tell Stenagarius. You neglected your duties. You neglected me. He'll have your tongue ripped out, your balls cut off, your hands and feet smashed. He'll have your eyes gouged out. Stingarius, said Cole, and you too, you lying whore. Whore. Golly, they're so rough. Everybody's so rough and mad. Phyllis gasped. For a moment, she was silent. The flickering torchlight illuminated a pale skin, staring eyes and lines on her forehead and between her nose and mouth. She looked much older. She raised her hand to throw her features. What you're thinking? Much fucking older. (laughs) 
Jesus, <laughs> granny. Her features into the shadows, and she said, please, Jack, take me back. Please, I'm so scared. Listen, she had a... Oh. Nice. She hesitated then. <laughs> Sorry, she's busy. <laughs> she hesitated then said softly, I'll do anything you want. Anything. Oh, hold on. Don't anything? Talk, don't talk to me like that. Anything. <laughs> don't you talk to me like that. No, he said, not even for the chance to make you suffer. I'm on the trail of something even more desirable than revenge. You bastard, she said. I hate your slimy guts. Forget mm. about what I said and don't ever try to touch me. You make my flesh crawl. Crawl. Then, he said evenly, mm. though it cost him much effort, you wouldn't have done everything I wanted, for I wanted you to love me. I wanted you to give yourself willingly, gladly, eagerly to me and to enjoy doing it. But I should have known better. That is one thing you can't possibly do, even if you wanted to. She did not reply. Uh, Left him on red. To put it in my butt. Maybe <laughs> you get a better reaction. So they get back to to the plan. What's the plan? The All plan, right. of course. They, you got to always go back to the plan. To the plan. So they're they're like, there's got to be an entrance. There has to be. But maybe it's further down. Oh. Down. All right. So. Follow me. I know where the downward entrance is, but I've Wait. never had the courage to take it. Now I've this someone is the with entrance me. entrance to downward to find the entrance. <laughs> to downward. Well, remember the one movie? No. Mm, as above, so below. They go down, uh, down, down, crazy. down, down. Ugh, scary. Great scary movie. Oh, my God. Around the vast curve, they walked until the curve began to straighten out. <laughs> Here in the middle uh, of the walk. <laughs> not all curves straighten out, just so you know. <laughs> Not that I. <laughs> no, have you a are. Curve, you got it straight and thick, baby. Mm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Recognize. <laughs> here in the middle of the walk was a hole just wide enough for a man with a pack on his back to insert himself. Hell yeah. In the middle of the tube leading down from the hole was a white metal pole. Dang. That was pretty good. <laughs> Cole put his hands Cole, <laughs> around the pole and his fingertips almost met. Mm. Oh. oh, so they're giving like a, <laughs> like, they're like both handling it? Yeah. And they're too, oh, we almost touched hands. Like well, you're already touching look, dick, my guy. The metal looked dry but felt greasy. I spit on it. <laughs> <laughs> like a fireman's Whoa. pole, he said. Where does it lead Hell to? Hell yeah, the fireman's fire? pole. Oh, easy to get down, Slide he said. Slide down and find out. But how do we get back up? You, oh, don't worry about we getting back up. We might not be strong enough to haul ourselves up hand over hand and the pole's slick. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can always brace ourselves against the wall of the tube, mm -hmm. Fyodor said. Don't you see that this confirms my theory? If it is so hard to get back up the pole, then those who go down must have another way to get back up. Perhaps um, you first. Yeah, we'll see. Fyodor <laughs> sat on the edge of the tube and extended his legs to reach the other side. He scooted forward until his buttocks slid off the edge and down into the opening. His knees went upward as his legs bent to give him room to fit into the tube. Tube. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you coming? He said to Phyllis. Not yet. Oh, <laughs> I asked you to make me, but. <laughs> yeah, Phyllis, oh, only if we're in love, though. <laughs> she said, I can go any place you can, Jackal, and a lot further. Mm. All right. All right. So they slide, they're sliding down the pole. Friction burns on their legs and hands. They kept a tight squeeze. Their journey yeah. downward was at a fair rate of speed. It seemed a long time until he reached the bottom, but it only took 90 seconds. That's a long time to fall. They were scooting. <laughs> scooting? Scoot, scooting, scooting. The air got <laughs> cooler as they went further down. Oh, All that right. happens when you mm -hmm. go underground, actually. Well, I don't but know if you knew hell, that, Well, but it's hell. So, like, why, right? You know, why? Wouldn't hell get cooler as you went up? Oh, uh, uh, that's hell the base? I don't still know. is a level under hell. Uh -huh. I guess this book's going to explain it all to us. Yeah. So, uh, they feel the draft. They're wondering where the stink went. Oh, it does And they stink. said maybe, well, because the sewers. It was really, they, I didn't talk about it, but they saw, talked about how horrible it smelled. Mm. So uh, now it's the stink has been replaced by a perfume. Can't you smell it? Fyodor shook his head. I never did have much of a nose. I'm odor deaf. Yeah, because it was splattered on his face, right? His nose. Smushy, fushy, Smushed yeah, whatever that was. He wasn't deaf to sound. He reacted just as quickly as Kel Cole did to the vast bellow. God's sake, Cole gasped. What is it? Where? That way, I think. He shook all over. His teeth chattered. Phyllis clung to the pole. Let's go the other way, Cole said. Another bellow boomed along the tunnel. 
Cole dropped the torch, pushed Phyllis so hard she sprawled out on the floor, leaped upward and grabbed the pole. Surprisingly, the pole now felt dry. It furnished a good grip. He swarmed upward for about 20 feet, then stopped to look down. Fyodor was not following him, but was standing beside the pole and looking up the shaft. <laughs> so he dropped Phyllis's ass and Get was going to leave him. him. He is a wuss. This guy. He is a wiener. His name's Jackal. Yeah. They need to change it to Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> so Phyllis was on her feet again, holding her torch. After one glance at her scorn, he turned away. He's, he goes back down, all right? He's like, yeah, I'm a wiener. So Yeah, a big one, dude. I, yeah. I don't know. Wait, a big wiener or is he a little wiener? <sighs> a little wiener. He's a little yeah. wiener. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when anybody when anybody calls anybody a dick, we're not saying you're a nice, big, beautiful one. We yeah. are telling you you're a measly little weird one. <laughs> so, so anyway, they're in the sewer still. You know what I mean? And mm. they're twenty feet below. A black, sluggish river started moving. Bubbles arose from its death. Then a de- depth, depths, depth, depths. Depth. Then a bubble larger than all the rest put together rose. It was followed by a head. There's a head in a bubble. There's a head in the bubble. All right. Well, that's what they've been looking for, right? The head? old bubble head. <laughs> oh, and there's something in here about the bipolarity of lubrication. Uh, yeah, so. everybody knows about that. <laughs> of course. All right. So the head was about six times as large as Cole's. A slanting forehead and no yeah, hair. Cole's got a little head, dude. <laughs> The slanting forehead, no hair, four elephantine ears, two enormous black eyes, no nose. Two enormous black what? Eyes. Oh, they said black guys. I'm like, this book is racist. <laughs> the mouth was broad, thick-lipped, and open, revealing a row of tiger-like teeth and two curving canines. The tongue ran out seemingly endless, and its tip finally fell into the water. And they saw that the tongue was covered with hundreds of tiny, sharp teeth. It was a demon, for the eyes shone in the torchlight as it turned turned its head cole didn't know how deep the river was or how tall That's the monster might be back up there getting eaten <laughs> it was possible that it could jump out of the water seize the edge of the walk and pull itself up onto the walk just as he thought of that the demon lifted its right hand out of the water rather it was not a hand but a paw the paw held a human leg while they watched the paw drop the leg onto the tongue and the tongue began running back into the mouth until it was well within the cavern of the mouth. Then the lips closed and there was a crunching as the lower jaw began grinding. The eyes, at least six inches wide, stared upward at them. They seemed to say, next? Slowly, oh. <clears throat> the three human beings began to move away, walking sideways while they watched it, afraid to take their eyes off it. They could have run, but there was nothing to keep it from swimming along in pace with them for the walk and the river followed the same tunnel. Maybe that leg belongs to the demon we were chasing, said Fyodor in a low voice. Demon eats demon. A demon will eat anybody or anything given a chance. And they're like, let's not give it a chance. He kept edging away. <clears throat> it started laughing. Ugh, scary. Panic overwhelmed them, and they ran until their lungs burned. They sobbed, and their legs were turning into jelly of utter fatigue. Then, sitting down, breath softening, they looked back along the oily water. No sign of the demon, but he could hear. But he could be under the surface just below. And when Fyodor's panting had slowed enough for him to gasp out words, he said, demons have to eat, and there can't be enough human flesh available for them. So he pointed at some excrement floating by and said, I think they must be scavengers keeping the sewage fairly clean anyway. So he's eating shit and whatever else comes by, I guess. Mm -hmm. So they had resumed walking, and then they heard voices. Mm -hmm. Voices. Presently, they were looking down on four human beings standing oh and there's a question mark by the way in parentheses human beings i don't know i don't know standing in that water up to their chests two men two women all holding their hands over their eyes against the glare of the torches near them about 50 yards away was the first of many islands they were to see in the river this was an oval flat topped island of the same grayish metal as the tunnel it was 50 feet across and rose from the surface to a height about a foot not very tall. <clears throat> so they start trying to talk to the guys. Don't be afraid. We won't harm you. In fact, we want to help you. We have rope. We'll let it down and pull you out of there. Are you out of your mind? Cole whispered savagely. They'll take our food away from us. Maybe throw us into the river and leave us here. We can't take a chance. Let's beat it. There was no reply for a moment from the waiters. They peered at them through the cracks between their fingers as if their eyes were becoming somewhat adjusted to what must have been uh, an intolerable glare. So like no telling how long they'd been there. <clears throat> 
to them, the three must have been shadowy figures vaguely discerned in a painful blaze, but they must have seen those on the walk well enough for them for their purposes. One of the men reached out and grabbed an exceptionally large piece of dung. He hurled it at Fyodor. The Slav, too surprised to dodge swiftly enough, was struck in the beard and chest. So now he's covered in shit. Got shit on him huh, from a stranger. Howling and hooting with laughter, the others imitated their companion. Cole and Phyllis ran out of the rain, out, ran out of range, but Fyodor was caught in the barrage. So he's covered in shit now too. Speechless, quivering, his face red in the torchlight, Fyodor stood with his hands around the rope. Yada yada yada. But he stopped as a shriek came from one of the group. Cole looked down into the river, and he could just make out near the edge of the light cast by the torch was what was happening the sewage dwellers excited by the intrusion had forgotten their customary vigilance now a monstrous head had appeared above the surface mm. followed by the top of a long limbless body that ended in porpoise like fins the yard long tongue of the demon had lashed out and wrapped around the arm of one of the women the hundreds of tiny teeth on the tongue were hooked into the flesh of the victim and the woman was being pulled into the deeper regions of the water evidently the bottom was shallow near the oval island the other screamed Screaming and flailing, their arms in the water were wading toward the island as swiftly as they were able. The demon propelled himself backward into the deep, drawing the woman with him. His, he disappeared and her head went under after him, cutting off a scream in the middle. A few bubbles, and that was that. Or so Cole thought. Some seconds later, she reappeared and began thrashing toward the island. Blood flowed from wounds all over her body, lancing the black waters with red. No use. The tongue twisted around one of her legs. Back she went, and in a short time, she was under again. The three waited for several minutes but saw no more of her now will you let us help you Fyodor yelled at the people go to hell shrinked one of the men Cole took Fyodor's hand and pulled him still protesting down the walk afterward when he quit sobbing was calm enough to listen Cole talked to him see they enjoy their degradation mm. that's insane that whole I was totally freaked out when I was reading that that's I was crazy. like what the fuck is going on this is supposed to be somewhat weird sexy but anyway, I think mostly this book just has a lot of innuendos. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyway, they start getting down the tunnel again. The wall's becoming hot and then cold. And for the next 200 yards, it was cold, then neutral. Then this is so stupid. Come on, uh, Philip, Jose. Well, he was farmer. laying there tripping. He's, he's like, like, I'm freezing. I need more blankets. It's really hot in here. It's like. <laughs> Turn the AC on. Oh my God, it's so cold. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently they're all bulging with panic again. Bulging with it panic. It says that Cole's and Phyllis's. Oh, they're, Cole stopped because the metal beneath his feet was quivering. Fyodor's eyes ballooned. Cole's and Phyllis's were bulging with panic too. And then there was a sudden flood. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun. All right. So we're almost done. They were almost swept away. Phyllis is screaming. Fyodor's screaming. Jack is whirling. He's screaming. A river demon was clutching the edge of the walk with its paws. Its lower jaw rested on the walk and its tongue was curled around Phyllis's right leg. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, no. Goodbye, Phyllis. Cole, shrieking with hate and hysterical fear, leaped at the huge head Pushed and kicked. Phyllis into the monster's mouth <laughs> and, and said, kicked. I hate you, Phyllis. <laughs> yeah, you bitch. You bitch whore. <laughs> I told you I was going to get you. <laughs> and kicked furiously at one of the great eyes. One of. The eye. It was a cyclops. A single eye glared in the middle of its low brow. His toe drove into the eyeball again and again. The eyeball burst. Wheezing, the demon uncooled the tongue from around Phyllis's leg. The whale-like body rolled over, exposing a wound about a foot in diameter, a hole out of which blood gushed. This was what had saved them, not Cole's blinding it. Crashed against some projection, probably in the flood, and it fucked him up, and earth and smashed rocks were all fallen, and he jumped back, striking Phyllis and looked upward. A large hole had been knocked out of the metal or whatever, and so they're like, we gotta go! You know, so mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. getting crazy. So you got to understand things are shaking and falling and people are screaming and demons are eating and blood's everywhere and shit's all over the faces. And it's just <laughs> insane. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Them. So uh, they keep they keep trekking on. Right. And Trek. about every what 400. Yeah. I mean, what keep going. Do? Every 400 yards, they came to the bottom of a shaft. Each was the junction of four tunnels at right angles to each other. Mm. So that's stressful. Yeah, so. <clears throat> So, wheezed Fyodor, he stopped. Phyllis, following closely, bumped into him. Cole stopped, too, to stare at an archway in the side of the tunnel. The chamber inside the archway was about 40 feet wide and bare of any furnishings, but at a level with their eyes. Hanging against the opposite wall of the chamber was a tiny bright light, or a spark, for it threw 
no beam. He walked on in and found that the air was much, much warmer than that in the tunnel. The wind was gone too. It was as if they'd come through an invisible, intangible door in the archway. There was a globe of light he'd first seen. The one side was another globe and way below a cluster of a dozen or so lights. <clears throat> this is very confusing. They're thinking maybe they're stars. Mm. Okay, so the bright mm-hmm. sparks were drifting off to the right now, a huge blue star. How many light years away? We don't know. It came into view. Then above it, a white shimmering cloud with even whiter knots embedded within the shimmering gas. The blue star in the galaxy or gas cloud, whatever it was, crawled to the right and a huge black mass appeared. There was enough illumination for Cole to see that the mass must have been made by hands for it was shaped like an elliptical concave mirror and antennas with strange outlines sprouted from all around the edges of the device. So this dude fucking philip is tripping mm-hmm. yeah he i wonder <clears throat> i wonder if philip is okay, Are you okay? i really am I mean, he wrote other books but i'm concerned for him i mean is he in a psych ward writing books <laughs> i mean can you make a living in a psych ward writing yeah, books why not? well because if they don't let you publish it and how you get the money i don't know why wouldn't they let you publish it because they're keeping you under wraps i don't know i don't know, I don't know. so maybe Never been to a psych ward. So Jack says, we're looking through a port in the outer shell of an artificial satellite. But a satellite of what? Of our galaxy? Mm-hmm. Fyodor, I don't understand. Jack says, I don't either. He extended his well, I finger. I don't understand either. He extended his finger past the window. So he stuck his finger in the hole. <laughs> So he fingered it. Yeah, okay. All right. But he felt neither warmth nor cold. There was a resistance, just a sensation of a resistance. Yeah, I don't know. So the shell. So somebody else's dick on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> That's a backwards ass glory like, hole if I've ever seen that? one. <laughs> it's accidentally docking with somebody. <laughs> ha ha, gotcha. Yeah. Like, oh, that was the weirdest, that was the weirdest mm, hole I've ever been. It was dry and greasy. <laughs> How does that work? So this shell or field or whatever it is must enclose this whole world. What could those machines, you know, remember they, they knew of some sort of machines whatever devices floating up there before cole shrugged his shoulders silently for a long time all three watched the universe spin by once the floor and walls quivered for a minute and they knew that the earth and rock above them rather inward must be shifting and now you gotta wait to see what the fuck happens next okay damn that's it that's the second episode, uh, the installment. That was the fifth episode. No, it was the second. I promise, because I calculated how many pages to read, because some, for some fucking reason, this guy also doesn't know how to make chapters in a book. He's a nut. This guy it's is a, crazy. It's just a short story. He's wild. It's a small poem. This is a very long story. Okay, so let me, let me say this real quick, too. So when I first picked up this book, I don't think I really paid attention to the cover very much. But now, having read the second section, I understand it more. So I bet you didn't really pay attention either. But look, mm. that's like that metal. It's a metal. It's like the tunnel they're in. Oh. So uh, for everybody who can't see. see and who hasn't looked at our social media post yet, because if you do go to our social media post, usually there's a picture of the cover of the book. There are two fully naked people, Jack and Phyllis. Um, Jack looks fit and like a Ken doll. And uh, Phyllis looks blonde like a Barbie doll. And it looks like there's a bunch of like tree branches and shit in the way. But at first I just thought it was just like the way he did the art around it. But now that we understand they've been walking through tunnels, it looks to me like they're in this tubular tunnel. Yeah, it's full of uh, trees and so. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah, I just yeah, thought yeah. that was interesting to finally like realize the what cover the makes fuck. a little bit of sense. Yeah. Like as crazy as this shit is, it's starting to make some sense and answer some questions for me. So like I thought I was going to like hate this book and I'm kind of like starting to vibe it starting to vibe out a little bit so anyway uh what do you think how do you feel i think that there's going to be a stunning conclusion at the end i can't that's wait. what you always think you always <laughs> think there's some kind of murder suicide blah 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 i haven't been wrong yet there's been something yeah except for the donut one what did happen at the Nothing. end of the donut it was boring one as fuck, dude. I began it like seven times. they went and got married after they put some donut oh, yeah. thieves little away babies did they little have? donut no babies. the babies happened in that one uh nordic viking one we read uh, yeah. yeah that's so. the one where they sold that kid and then had another kid. no the billionaire's baby exchange <laughs> All right, so the anyway. title was misleading. I was just saying, I thought it was about <laughs> selling a baby. 
Yeah, so please definitely check out some of our other books if you didn't start at the beginning and, and just follow along with us um, because we love there's story some time. great we love stuff for you to out join there. Us for story time. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much for listening to the second installment of Inside Out uh, by Philip Jose Farmer, who was clearly tripping on some crazy ass shit. Uh, I recommend not doing whatever he did because <laughs> you're going to be freaking maybe out. Doing a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, stay tuned for the next wild ass adventure of this weird ass sci-fi religious sexy novel we're reading whatever it is we'll be back after these messages (laughs) bye